Hello, ladies and gentlemen, we switched maps. I very wisely attempted to tell both of these teams that I am streaming to my Twitch channel, and I posted it in the Overwatch general uh, chat. So I basically just spammed my Twitch channel at a bunch of random people who happened to playing Overwatch at the time, which makes me the lowest of scum, and I apologize to any of you who have jumped in and checked out the channel. This is actually just for the benefit of these two teams. Said teams are Primal and Melee GG Black. We are going to give a King of the Hill map a go. This is Li Zhang Tower, a very popular map for Lucio, and to that effect, I see that both teams are running a Lucio. And we are spectating melee gg black at the moment as we get on to the control point looks like they're looking to split their teams up one healer in either direction and they are the first to make it to the control point and both teams will come to a head right outside the pagoda no no real advantage for either team i see at the moment pretty much equal number of players on the field no actual deaths on either side both teams being aware that with the current meta in overwatch whoever can capture the control point first gets a serious advantage that is my cell phone going off apologies and whoever wins the control point first has a serious advantage for the remainder of this match and it looks like which team is that? The team, uh, Melee GG Black does take over the control point, which is definitely good. Uh, Lucio is alive. Everyone's alive on Melee GG Black. And just as I say that, Tracer as DLTN goes down. Primal going to have to fight the uphill battle to take control of this control point. We do have a Pharah ult ready. Uh, we actually have a lot of ults ready on both teams. I'd actually say, uh, all things considered, there are more... Oh, there we go. And there we go. The ults are going out. Farah uh, getting some serious work done with the help of a sound barrier to remain alive. And that is going to be the capture. They have managed to take the control point. And now it is Melee GG Black going to have to come back from that. Though they have done it once before. And I'm sure they are prepared for that they have two healers both with their ults ready so whenever this push does come out it's going to involve a lot of hp on both sides brinker as winston going in first i'd say flanked by his team but he's pretty much flying solo in there uh, but with the help of his ult he's going to do a lot of damage going to get eliminated before his team can really push in there i'm not sure what blocked his team oh i see farah Getting some serious work done being played by Lickitung, slowing the team down, getting them a free tag on Winston and Crash with the mad uh, Reaper Death Flower to finish off the Mercy. Not in time for an ult, but the team was so out of position that they're going to easily get a bunch of damage and pretty much wipe that team and continue holding the control point, which is going to put them at the percentage advantage, 51% to 36%. Melee GG Black is going to have to recover from this, and I do see a couple ults ready on their team. Uh, Reaper's Death Ult uh, is Death Flower, and Tiny Dancer playing Lucio's Ray to lay out the sound barrier. So if they can push Reaper in there, they, they could get some damage down. But this particular control point is difficult for the Death Flower due to the little platform in the middle blocking it. Um, and I mean... Mm. There, there is some damage, but for the most part, that was entirely countered by the opposing Lucio's ult. Said Lucio is being played by Kiffs and is still on and blocking the control point. And as long as he can remain on that control point, they're not going to be able to get any capture time for it. Lucio being a very good class for stalling on this control point, thanks to his wall riding ability, lets him skate around the top of the control point almost indefinitely. And that is pretty much what happened there. Neither neither Lucio really having to due to the amount of team support. And we are into overtime, 99% for Primal. Are there any members of Melee GG Black? And one of them does get on the control point. Was that a Tracer? It looks like Tracer died but did prevent the overtime from running out, giving her team a chance that was not successful. Round one of three is going to go to Team Primal. And we are down to map two. Melee GG Black feeling the heat. We are still spectating Melee GG Black. Let's get a look at these class consistencies. I see uh, two tanks, two offense, and two support on Melee GG Black. And the exact same thing. Almost the exact same classes. The only difference I see is that 
Primal has a Pharah, and Melee GG Black has a Tracer. Two very mobile classes in their own way, and the push is out. Melee GG Black going out. Didn't look like they popped their Lucio ult, but both teams did end up arriving at the same time. And we're going to have an intense skirmish right out here, but it looks like Primal was quicker on pushing in to the control point. So they're quickly going to become the defensive team for the most part. And if somebody has the opportunity to capture this control point in the next four seconds, it really does look like it's probably going to be Primal and not Melee GG Black. Uh, even though both teams are equally trading kills at the moment, I would say the positional advantage is going to Primal at the moment, though the numerical advantage, especially with that Mercy ult coming out, is going to go to Melee GG Black, but it's not, it is, it is going to be able to stop Primal from taking that first very valuable capture. Oh, and some damage being laid out. And that is almost certainly going to be a capture for Primal, the control point now being in their control, giving them once again the advantage in King of the Hill. Because seriously, if you can capture the control point first in a competitive King of the Hill match, it is very likely that you're going to round it the entire match. And they are close to a shutout, having won the other map. We might not even get to a game three, but it's certainly too early to count your chickens before they hatch. Oh my, a very well-timed Zarya ult completely plowing through the defense. A lot of kills, probably a play of the game right there somewhere. But we'll have to see because plays of the game, uh, in, a, in a game like Overwatch with all these ultimates, they can come when you least expect it and at any time. Uh, I want to see I want to see Tracer try to get in there. It's a very good flanking class because they're going they need to start getting some capture time on that point. There's only 42%, which means that there's around they're they're around halfway done uh, to winning the second and final match. We are going to get some capture time. Doesn't look like anyone's seen her. And now they did. Was able to capture the control point about 33%. And by distracting the defense, she gave her team an opportunity to push in there. But, okay, there we go. Uh, before I say anything, uh, Mercy does provide the ult to give her team the other chance, but some very good frags coming down from Team Primal. And a Lucio ult going to help out with that. Very close to an air blast. A very close to air blast kill on Lucio's part, but Mercy can fly. And I think she's hiding, waiting for the uh, massive res. And there we go. There it is. Giant res right on the control point going to stop Melee GG Black from getting some points uh, or some capture time on that control point. And we're going to have a lot, a lot of particle effects on this control point right now. And every second that Primal can keep one of their teammates on the control point or in the case of that Zarya ult, all of them on the control point. Oh, that Zarya ult. That Zarya ult was well-timed, but they were able to shoot their way out of it. I don't think there was enough team support uh, for Melee GG Black to really capitalize on that. And that is going to be game for Primal. Yes, when, when, when Zarya allows Pharah to just completely obliterate the opposing team and they can't dodge, Zarya's ult is so good at combos. And uh, one thing I see consistently from Primal is that combo where they merge uh, Pharah with Zarya. And I think that's one of the reasons that we see Zarya on Primal, or I'm sorry, uh, Pharah on Primal so often, even though she's not that common a pick for other teams. I notice the other team was usually using a Tracer, a McCree, or a Widowmaker in lieu of a Pharah. And so that was the first Koth match. Koth matches are really quick, so I have a feeling we're going to play another game after this. Looks like we're going to King's Row. I really want to tell the people here that I'm shoutcasting, but I don't want to send it to General again, and I don't actually know how to use the chat that well. Can I can I filter? No, I guess I guess it's just not happening. All right, we're we're moving on to King's Row. 
Um, I know that Primal's aware I'm shoutcasting, and Melee GG Black, uh, I guess we can we can tell them in Discord or something like that afterwards. And here we are, King's Row, the uh, most popular map in competitive Overwatch, second only to Hollywood. I mean, see, if, if you want my honest opinion, as someone who's been shoutcasting this for a while, I see these two maps over and over and over again. Uh, very balanced, definitely can go either way for both teams. Speaking of both teams, who are six seconds away from completing, I see that um, Primal is going for the two tanks, two offense, and two support. And one of those offense is Soldier 76, who really can pull double duty as a backup healer. So there's going to be a lot of health coming from Primal in this game. On the other side, the offensive team, Melee GG Black, is going to be running two tanks, two offense, and two support. No Soldier 76, but a Reaper instead. So very, very simple, straightforward teams. Though, though as Reaper, Reaper is going to be able to heal himself. So there's still going to be a lot of healing. And I'd actually say these two teams are almost exactly even when it comes to the classes that they chose. Soldier 76 and Reaper playing pretty, pretty similar battlefield roles. Reaper might be a bit more of a flanker, while Soldier 76 tends to stick with the team. Uh, which will, which might be interesting, considering that the Reaper is on offense. And said offense is choosing to push through the side door, as is very common for this map. And here we go, Reinhardt, as always, leading the charge. And wow, look at how quickly they're pushing in there. They're not wasting any time. Let's just get right on that control point, shall we? I'm not sure if that's panning out for them. The defense... Defense might not have been expecting a full frontal assault that quickly, but they are definitely rallying to the cause and defending with Heisen's Roadhog in particular. Uh, doing doing a lot of work keeping the opponents taking out uh, DLTN with a very well-placed uh, alt fire from the blunderbuss. And ult already, Roadhog gains ult so quickly when played at this level, uh, completely suppressing uh, any hope in, uh, of an offensive push, because that, that, there really wasn't even an offensive push going on, but any possible hopes for one were completely dashed by that assault, and it looks like uh, Melee GG Black is aware that their uh, very aggressive push did not work and are not interested in trying that again. Their whole team is Ray, and they are building ult, and we do have a Lucio Sound Barrier pushing in, countered immediately by another Lucio Sound Barrier, so there probably won't be any deaths for the next few seconds as both teams just trade kills left and right. Both medics have their ults ready, but Lego Math has gone down, meaning that, oh, and Kifs has gone down too. There will be no reses until both medics can back up, get back onto the field, but both Lucios among the very few teammates still alive, and we basically have uh, two Lucios and two tanks duking it out for this control point, and there we go. There is some capture time on the point, and this might actually be a full-fledged capture. There are not enough members of Team Primal to really push in there and stop this. Uh, though possibly because they're aware of that, Melee GG Black not worrying too much about getting people on the control point itself. Uh, they're going to capture this at their leisure, get the payload onto the map, and keep moving forward. Uh, trying for the aggressive po approach, once again, they have actually completely abandoned the payload, and now they have not. So, wow, look at that push. They, they just, they, they plowed all the way through the middle, lost a couple of kills from Crash. And I see that Roadhog uh, is not interested in retreating and is sticking all the way up there in Crash, landing a third kill from this push. Let's see how Crash is doing all the way up there, laying down some suppressing fire, as Soldier76 is so fond of doing. Maybe just funnel down that Reinhardt shield in preparation for an attack. Looking at the uh, ult percentage, I see that both Mercies have their ult ready, as does one picker. Um, or, you know, Reinhardt's not a picker, Reinhardt's a tank. So we have, we have, we have two offensive ults ready, and there we go, we have the first one. Um, we got, we got, they got the pick on the Mercy, so there's not going to be any revives coming up soon. Definitely a well-played ultimate, uh, that is 
probably they probably played that just to to run the advantage, knowing that the uh, opposing Mercy had been down. So they might as well keep going with it. I see that Reaper is trying to survive in there using his Wraith mode and not succeeding. Some spam being traded across this uh, street. Legomath already has ult again, uh, so. Alright, you know, Legomath was picked. Legomath never got to cast that. So this next attack, they are, if they do move in, they are moving in with the Mercy Advantage. And Lucio's relative goal. I see that Sync has switched over to Widowmaker. Getting in there up front and aggressive. You don't see that many Widowmakers in competitive after she got nerfed. So it's always nice to see somebody who's confident enough in their, uh, in their scoping ability to continue making her useful. Uh, despite the recent nerfs that she got and there we do have the ultimate played out for Mercy reviving her team for another push I, I wouldn't say that that was very successful um, yeah probably probably I think in hindsight they would have probably preferred to hold that for a real push because all that really gave her team much a chance to do is retreat and wind up in the exact space they would have been if they just patiently waited to respawn and when it comes to ultimate advantage, I'd say that it's going to primal at the moment, especially considering they're on defense, and this cart has has hardly moved an inch in the last maybe minute and a half. If primal is uh, doing a pretty good job of holding this down, melee GG Black has three minutes and 15 seconds to push this cart pretty healthy distance to the next checkpoint. Uh, but they are getting some of that work done now. We have a Reinhardt ult going down to eliminate his counterpart on the other side of the field. And that, when it comes to kills, though, there are more kills happening on red team, though the remaining defending classes are going to hold it off on their own, thanks to the Mercy Lickitung, getting some damage out there, trying to scare the opponents off. Not going to work that well, especially with the help of that Mercy ult. Looks like Advantage is going, Heisen is down, and they are pushing that control point. They are not going to reach the control point before a full wave of opponents have respawned to block them. But they are in a pretty good position. Soldier 76 attempting to get a little flank in here. And uh, Melee GG Black pushing in a lot. They, they haven't even captured the control point yet. And I, I think by pushing in that aggressively, they almost guaranteed the payload capture. So all in all, a good choice, all things considered. When it comes to ultimates, uh, Kif's Primal's Mercy does have her ultimate ready for a revive, meaning we might see an aggressive push in here. And there we go. The push is happening, being spearheaded by Gajiro, who has his sound barrier ready. I apologize to all competitive Lucius. I almost never spectate you, because you kind of just heal everybody. And, hey, don't get me wrong, he's my favorite class. Uh, Thracon pushing in there. Pushing in there very aggressively, while blocking his teammates at the same time, getting some serious work done as Reinhardt. Payload is now in territorial control of the defense and moving backwards. There is three minutes and 30 seconds left to capture this payload, and there will be no more time added, uh, not counting overtime. This is all that Melee GG Black is going to get to push into this final elbow and make it to the choke point. Heisen getting some, he's getting some cheap shots with the help of his hook, and I guess it, I guess it is rude of me to call them cheap shots, but he is playing Roadhog. Justice is raining from above and below. And a massive revive on the part of Kiffs, who also managed to survive doing so and bring her teammates back to life. And we do have the counter ult, along with the counter sound barrier, almost completely wasted by an excellent earth shatter from Thracon, who is uh, completely surrounded by opponents. But I'd say that it was certainly worth it for the amount of time that he brought his team. Uh, Kiffs being very risky with that move in there. I think she was trying to get to Reinhardt before he died. And Heisen putting in some work at very low HP to keep the opponents backwards and going to finish off Lucio with a hook melee. Very good little solo combo. And another one, Roadhog. Another Roadhog kill. It's always fun to get hooked by Roadhog and then die. So defense is going to push in. That cart is going to move backwards, but every time every time the offense pushes, they manage to get that cart a little bit further. We have uh, Widowmaker back on the field again. I'm not sure. There might have been a bit of a switch there in the middle, but I couldn't see for sure. 
Uh, Widowmaker ready to punish anybody who surrounds this corner, but was not expecting a Soldier 76 Tactical Visor, a class that plays very similar to her, but with a bit more survivability and generic uh, spamability and firepower. And we're going to have defense getting very aggressive with these pushes into this control point. Uh, they're going to hold back a little bit because there's no reason. And that was a pretty decent wipe on the point of the defense. They're all alive and holding ult uh, except for two of them. And their opponents are all respawning. Though they're also doing pretty good on ult. I see that uh, they have one of each type of ult. They have a support ult, a Reinhardt ult, and an offensive ult, which I always like to see. So let's see if... They're going to push in there and try and get something done with that. But for the most part, Farah is not really ulting and doesn't have the health to jump in there at the moment. But here, there we go. We do have the Farah ult going to eliminate the Reinhardt. Get some damage. Justice is going to rain from above in the other direction too. And we do have a revive on the point of the offense. And oh, there we go. Reinhardt. Reinhardt pushing in there to his desk. I hear a tactical visor is activated not much going to happen with that uh, especially with the help of that McCree flashbang but he is going to get out with his life which is always a pretty good goal on the part of the defense the offense being able you know the uh, offense actually has a harder time respawning than the defense I'd say that when the defense can get in there delay the push and still come out alive that's just a bonus uh, and there are 27 seconds left on the clock. Melee GG Black has to be aware that these pushes need to be a little bit more successful than they are because the payload has been pushed almost entirely back to the checkpoint and Reinhardt trying to get something done uh, for that push in the front. An attempted attack almost completely countered by the opposing Reinhardt ult followed by the uh, Roadhog ult is going to be eliminating their tank. They don't have a Reinhardt shield. They are on the, the payload but they have so far to go. Uh, but they are they're doing what they need to be that what needs to be done Mercy on the opposing team is is popping her ult Legomath as Mercy on the opposing team does not have her ultimate ready yet And overtime is running out there managing to keep people on the payload to stop that overtime from running out Entirely and at this point it's just a matter of tag the cart keep the cart moving forward And they're doing so but if Oh, they're so far away, and that overtime clock is ticking out, and there's no tracers or anything, and that is game. Primal successfully defended the end of the map from the, from, from the payload for the victory. Do you remember that ult? A massive Mercy ult bringing a bunch of players back to life and the Mercy herself managed to keep living for a while after that. The two real goals with any Mercy ult bringing a bunch of players back to life and not dying yourself. So a very good team and very good play and I am excited to see if we have another match after this. Looks like we're jumping into those new matches really quickly. Get more Overwatch out there for you. Oh, my mistake. We don't switch matches at this point. We switch sides. So we do have the other half of King's Row happening, and this time it is Primal's turn to push the payload, while Melee GG Black attempts to stop them. And I do see a Junkrat on the roster for Melee GG Black, so I always love seeing Junkrats on the field. And uh, of that note, we have two support, one defense, two tank, and one offense and said offense is soldier 76 so that is a lot of firepower and a lot of healing and a lot of hp floating around so there is a lot going for that team and the other team which is going to be on offense is uh two tanks two offense no my apologies three tanks one support and two offense going very heavily for the hp at the cost of healing though there is again a soldier 76 to back up the mercy and provide a little bit of assist healing in 
I'm probably I'm going to spec the defense for this one because I, I really like the class consistency they have going here just because of uh, having a junk rat on point uh, allows them to deal so much spam damage uh, around this wall right here I mean he can just he can just shoot pills over here and he can block off this main entrance that nobody ever uses but more importantly he can really stop this little alleyway right here and I always love as Junkrat putting a concussion mine or a trap right here because somebody's going to turn that corner and players in Overwatch have a tendency to not look down and so here we go the the Junkrat pills being spammed uh, to his heart's content and we have the push, definitely not as aggressive a push as Melee GG Black. These uh, these players on Primal are pretty content with holding in this little doorway and trying to trying to get some spam. They're trying to gauge the opposing team. They're probably waiting for the, uh, the the classes to show up when you hit tab instead of the little mystery numbers. And Lickitung as Farah pushing in there, seeing if we can get some damage down and for the most part defense is not giving up the point but they are kinda of playing this very conservatively both teams kinda of cautiously edging in there to try to try, try to get some territorial advantage on the point. I see the Gojiro has managed to down the opposing tanker. Gojiro is playing Roadhog with another kill on the other Roadhog both tanks on the opposing team down until the Mercy swoops in there and changes the tide of the battle and Lickitung going to down a lot of people. Those There are a lot of kills going around. I did see a Mercy on Mercy kill uh, right there. Always exciting when women of medicine go toe to toe. The payload is now on the field and that was a very fast capture. I'd say that capture was a little bit faster than Melee GG Black's was and just like Melee GG Black did they are pushing forward as aggressively as they possibly can and they have so many ultimates ready on the point of the offense. Though the defense is no slouch in that regard either. Uh, Reinhardt and Lucio not, not really exciting ults though Gojiro, I'm excited to see what Gojiro does with that ultimate, and he is flanking around the side. Um, they did spot him, however, but oh, a, a, the Reinhardt Earthshaker ult is going to go in, and and that is down for Gojiro. Died at the hands of the opposing Roadhog, and the defense is going to uh, kind of basically recover from what just happened. That Soldier 76 is very far ahead with his tactical visor, was not able to stay alive long enough to use it. it means he still gets to hold on to it. And Basics hiding in the corner, getting some heals done, and then is going to flank around the side. I'm interested to see if he jumps in there with ult. Nope, going to continue. Uh, there we go. We do have the ult, and he is focus firing down that medic changing his mind to the two tanks. Not sure if he should have changed his mind, because I don't think he's going to get any kills. Uh, instead of a very probable pick on the Mercy, who does have ult. So I think if I had been that Roadhog, I would have continued attacking the Mercy, but she's going to live. And the entire team is going to push all the way to the payload successfully. Primal making some very good time on this map and see if anyone interesting has their ult ready. We do have a Junkrat who, Junkrat does have ult, but it's interesting to see if he uses it, has a tendency to do that. He's going to take the high ground. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. Oh, hey, completely countered by Crash's Zarya being played by Heisen. Don't know if Heisen saw that rip tire coming, but whether she did or not, she did completely counter that. Very good timing on that regard with that barrier. And Primal is really pushing in there. That payload not wasting any time in getting there into the control point. Who has it? I see that Crash has his ultimate ready and his tactical visor is open and ready. Pick on Reinhardt. A lot of damage being laid down. Pick on Junkrat. Trying to get... Trying to uh, scare that Lucio out from where he's hiding and just desperately trying to, to, to heal his team. And that payload pushing further than Melee GG Black was ever able to make. And a sound barrier, uh, Reinhardt, who is ulting, is able to push in there. Really the one thing that was able to stop that push in its entirety. Both teams trading a lot of kills right here. 
And there is the counter pop ult uh, from Mercy, bringing her team back to life. And is there enough teammates to block this? I see Lucio is on the main payload trying to get some work done and stop that payload from moving forward. And he is succeeding at keeping that payload where it is. But I see that Gujiro does have his ultimate ready. And he is going to assist that with the Zarya ult. But there's nobody there for the Zarya ult. So that was... Probably a m it wasn't misused. I, w I mean, I would have used it at the same time too, and it is enough. That is going to be the capture. Primal able to push the payload all the way to the end and win the match. And that was Roadhog going full ham and just plowing through an entire line of defenders. Excellent play, excellent play. And that is King's Row. We've played both maps, and this time we're going to switch to a new map, more likely than not. Be exciting to see what we end up playing. 